Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and thank you for joining me. We are going to cover autocomplete in this training. We're going to also be able to add attachments to our employees. We've updated time clock history and payroll history. We've also going to add in the ability to automatically save any changes that we make. So it's going to be a great training. Let's get started. All right, we've got a lot to cover in this employee manager part three. Some of those are going to be the autocomplete feature. So when I start typing in a name, I want that name to appear. That's very important because when we have a lot of names, we want those names to appear automatically. We've also got to get the save new employees. We have add new, but we need to program the save new. That's important. We didn't get to that last time, as well as the cancel new. We've got a program both of those macros they're relatively simple so we'll move quickly over that um, I want to make some adjustments to the payroll history and the time clock history that's kind of cleared out so we need to fix that up as well we also want to display the employee picture only in the general info tab if you'll notice uh, when we move tabs it doesn't always appear so there's kind of a glitch on that we want to make sure that that it only appears when we create an employee picture that's only on the general info so that's important uh, we I want to work on the attachments the file attachments I want to get those activated and see if we can't program that in get as much done as we can about that we're gonna to try to go over about an hour today just as we usually do and so that uh, keeps our lessons packed full me we may copy over some code but I'll go with that we're gonna to try to move as fast as possible but slow down for those really important items which are often difficult and especially with the data mapping and that's very important so we're gonna move real slow over that because I want to make sure you get that we did cover data mapping and that includes bringing the information over from our employee list all the way to the manager list to bring in to load those employees which is working fine but what I want to do is I want to include the mapping when we make a change to a field here I want those changes reflected back into this list automatically and that includes data mapping and we're going to add that in over here on the right side also we're gonna set some there's one more thing a small detail when we click on payroll detail I want this you see this earnings detail I want this selected automatically it should look like this automatically when selected but you see when we click it it doesn't if we've selected another one and we go back it doesn't it doesn't have that default selected so that's just a minor issue we want to clean that up as well and so we're gonna go over that we're gonna let's get started let's start off with the employee autocomplete this is a really important feature now I covered autocomplete um, in its entirety on a older video but we're gonna briefly go over some issues and how to make that happen let's just go over a brief lesson autocomplete when we have a list of fields autocomplete helps us correct those fields so for example if we have days of the week here here and we want to create uh, we have a drop down list we want to autocomplete that autocomplete helps simply by typing in tu it automatically completes so basically the idea is I want to take these names and those are the names that we've stored here employee IDs and I want to use those names to automatically complete it so one of the issues with autocomplete is you need to have the data in the same column for example if we try to put on Monday here it's not gonna work if we uh, try to use here it's not gonna work it has to be in the same column so that's critical we need the data in the same column also another critical issue we cannot skip theoretically we cannot skip rows you see how this it's not gonna work however if you saw one of my earlier videos there's something called the break the chain or don't break the chain method and that can be an invisible or visible chain that connects your data your drop down list to the data so that means if we create a chain and here's a chain a chain is a connection of cells so here we have a connection it just has to be a connection then automatically when we do that it's gonna work see that there's a connection there and that connection can be as far horizontally as you want so we could theoretically do this X bring the X's out and it can be any text even spaces so if we were to build a chain like this here we can bring that over here and it's still going to work you see that but if we break one link in that chain by deleting that it's not gonna work 
Okay, I know it's strange. This is not described anywhere in Excel. I've never found a good explanation of, of how this works, but it works. I call it don't break the chain method. We need to have this chain here, and then automatically it works. So we're going to use that same concept for our employee list. Now, one of the issues is our main list is not on our sheet, right? We have our employee drop down list here. And also, look, we have all of this really important information in this column here. We've got tons of data. How are we going to create a drop down list that's uh, ability to auto complete if we have all this data? Well, as you saw in the last video, as long as we have a chain, we can do that. So that means if I use that column, I place that data right here and we create some sort of a link hidden or visible hidden could be with spaces it's gonna work so let's go ahead and show you how we do that and now one of the other issues that we have is we can copy this data but this data changes consistently right every time we add a new employee we need that list to update well we can do that when we copy and paste by link so when we select all and right now we're gonna select all let's go down to let's use a large list let's go BB 1000 Okay, so I'm going to go to the bottom, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight all the way up, go all the way up, and then hold the shift down and control. Okay, so these are all of our names up to, let's say, 1,000, which is fine for now. And I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to go into Employee Manager, and I'm going to paste. And I'm going to paste Special, Paste Links. Paste Link is here. If you have an older version, Paste Special, Paste Link is the same thing right here, Paste Link. Now we've got the link, okay, but it's still not going to work. Let's choose a name. Let's figure out A Audi, okay? A U D, nothing there, right? So we need to see, we need to create that link. Let's go ahead and unhide all of our rows and create that link. So we're going to unhide that. Now we've got all of our rows exposed. Now if we use the X, right? We've got a we've got a link here. We've got text here. We've got text here. Now we go all the way down. Let's copy that and we'll go all the way down to right let's just say the top here hold the shift down paste in those values and create one more x all the way at the bottom right here connecting those now there's a connection now if we type in a u d it's going to work you see how that is we got it. now those x's are ugly we don't want those there right we don't want the x's there let's this also works with spaces. So I'm going to put a double space right here. And then I'm going to copy this. And then hold down the shift. And then shift down arrow. Control. All the way down. And we're going to paste. Paste those values in. Now there's spaces in here. Not X's, but spaces. If we were to select any of those cells, we can highlight this. We see there's a space here. So we know we've got that. Now take this X, space. Okay, now we have our link. It's hidden, but it's there. A U D. There it is. Now you notice the A U A's come up fast, but you'll notice names at the end of the list may come up a little bit slower. This list is not very long. Z Y C. It may, but when you have a long list of 3,000, it may take a little longer. Z Y C H. There. See, it took a little bit longer. So keep that in mind. The ones that are at the end of the list are going to take longer. And autocomplete is only going to complete when there is a unique name. So let's here's an example. Let's take a look at B Blaker and Blakes. Okay, that's a perfect example. Those two names, Blaker and Blakes. You're not going to get an a quick B L A K, nothing happens. E, nothing happens. But as soon as you get to that unique ID R, it comes up. Right? As soon as you get to that unique, it comes up. But now let's say you don't want a unique ID. You want to look. When you're in there, Alt, Alt, down arrow will get you right to there. Alt, down arrow will get you right. So then you can search for that. That's a great little trick. So we could even do BL, Alt, down arrow will get us to the area. And we can quickly browse from that. So that's a great little trick when you have big lists. It's very, very important. Searching through this list or even more is going to take a long time. All right, one more step in this particular thing. We don't want an ugly list of names, do we? Now, we don't want to see that. So let's control shift and then down arrow, highlight all those all the way to the top and then we're going to give them a color. Let's color those the same as the background color. 
home and our background color is that light blue so we'll color the text there we go now it's hidden now we have a hidden list we've got autocomplete instituted and it's working great and everything is hidden and it works really good so now we have a list all right that's perfect now when we add a new name we also want it alphabetically sorted right now when we have add new it's it's going to end up at the bottom let's program the add new and the sort in there well actually we've got the add new let's program the save new so when we save it we're going to go in there so into the VBA let's focus on the save and we want to we're going to use mapping for that and the idea is this when I have a change let's say I have a change to the last name I want that change saved automatically I don't want to have to click update 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 right I just want it to save automatically when I make a change to an existing employee this is an employee that's already been added obviously if you have a new employee you want to add all of the information before clicking the save our save is not activated currently okay so we will assign a macro to this and then it'll be working so the idea is for existing employees if I want to take this address I want to enter it and I want it saved to the database I don't want anything else to happen I just want it saved so that when I go click Jeff one more time I want that information to come right back here right so let's do that now the idea is address is let's take a look in the employee list and see where address is located address is located in our fifth column our fifth column now let's insert a row just temporarily so we can see those columns we know column A is one, two, and we can continue on. This is an important, this is for mapping. We'll delete this row in just a moment. So we're going to go all the way, all the way to 28. So we can see exactly what column. And the idea is this. We want address. We need to know that address is column five. This is data mapping the other way. So basically, if a user enters something in here, I know we know the row. We know the row. Why do we know the row? Because the employee ID row is seven. That comes from our prior lessons. So we know the row. We know it's going to go right here, right? But we don't know the column. We know it's five, right? So all I need to do is associate this address with five, right? All I need to do, that's the most important thing. I need to know this address is five. How can we do that? We do that with data mapping once again. So what I want to do is I want to move some columns over and I want to put five like right about here or something, okay? And so that's with data mapping. Now let me go ahead and copy it from a sample over. I'm going to make this a lot quicker so we can get to a lot more. This is something, this is one, this is what we're going to be working on today. Hopefully we'll get to all this, but it's going to look like that. So we're going to focus on the attachments. So here's what data mapping looks like. And all it is is just empty cells with numbers in the side. You see address is five. So I'm going to copy this. In order to save time, I'm just going to paste it right over into our application. Make sure we don't get confused between the applications. AA is the column. We're going to paste that right in there. Paste all that in. There we go. Okay, so now we have, now you see five is associated with addresses. Okay, so now we know this row eight, five. Everything is matched up on the rows. For example, let's just take a quick screenshot of that so we know what we're working with. And I'll take a screenshot of our map. And you can do the same. When you're mapping, I want you to take a screenshot and use some screenshot software. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste that right back into our software, right in the employee manager. So this is a quick way to map. You take a look at this and you paste it right in here. And of course, you can have field names too. That's okay too, right? But I want to make sure. So eventually, if you if you were to copy this, copy all of this, you'll copy the field names and then you'll clear it out. We really only need this. We don't want the field names, but it's helpful, right? We need to know this is name, last name, right first name and so and so on right so what we've done is we've mapped those out so last name is two you can see last name is two first name so having that screenshot right near really helps you quickly map out and remember this is our employee ID here so now we know the row is employee ID, but what about the column okay let's focus on the column how do we know that this is column how do we know well it's a distance it's a specific distance away so let's delete that and this is column 28 okay so if we make a change to last name what is the current column what it, when we make a change what is the current column the current column is six okay so this is column six so if we make a change to this, we need to know, we need to 
add 22 to this column. The current column plus 22 equals 28, right? So the current row, the row's the same, the row doesn't change, plus the current column plus 22 equals 28. So that means, let's say I want to get this to. I'm, I'm right here and I need to know what number. I need to get that to. How do I know? Well, I know it's the current row, row 6. I know we're on the current column is 6. If I add 22, then I know exactly how to find this number. I know exactly what to put. That's data mapping. 26. It's always going to be 6. So we always the same distance away. Even this field, right? This field is column 10. So that means we know automatically this column is going to be 32, right? Because it's always 22 away. So this is 32. So that means all we have to do in every single case is simply add 22. And we can get that exact column. So that's how we do it. All right, I've clicked on a tab here. Let's click on general info. And so we can see the data mapping. And so basically it's been mapped throughout. I've done the, I've done the work for you. So when we unhide this, and you'll see the fields that are, the fields I've already mapped out, don't worry about the formatting here, that's not really important, but we'll just go back to general. But that doesn't matter, it's just the number that focuses in, right? So all, everything's been mapped, and we know that it's been mapped to these specific columns here, right? We can delete this now, this is not, this is only helpful for mapping the columns, we don't, that's not part of our data. So we've got that mapped out and you know where that comes from now. So we're good on that. So now when we make a change, we need to simply add to this program the change. If we make a change, then update the database. We just have to check for two things. If we make a change, make sure it is not a new file. Make sure this is false. Make sure we're changing something in this range. We also want to make sure that this is a number. Otherwise, it might create an error. In other words, if I make a change to here for some reason, it might come back with an error because there's no number right here, 22 columns away. So we want to make sure that we're looking for a number. So that's going to be helpful. All right, so we can do that in the VBA. Let's go into the VBA and get that updated so that we can automatically update that database. Into the developers, Visual Basic we go, and we'll take a look at that. So we have the employee manager here, and this is where we left off. Okay, so we're going to focus on the employee manager. That's the sheet that we're focused on. And we're also going to be focused on worksheet change. That is when the user actually makes some sort of a change, not a selection change, but an actual change. We've got this covered for employee range. If they, if they make a change to the employee, we're going to load the employee. We've covered that previously. But now we're going to focus on a new range. So let's go ahead and type that in. If not intersect target. And what's the target comma? Don't forget a comma there. Range. And then E6 is our first. E6 is the first cell in that range. And the last six goes all the way to 184. That's our entire range. That covers every cell. Okay. So if the user makes a change within that, do something. Is nothing. And remember, there's another thing. We have to make sure B1 is false. We've got to make sure it's not loading. B1 is our employee load. So that means when the employee loads, those are also changes, but that goes to true. And range B1 dot value equals false. Okay, so let's put a little note here. On cell change, but not on employee load. When the employee loads, those are also changes, but that's not the kind of change we want. We want the user change, when the user makes a change. Okay, so that's important. Then Okay, so now we have that and if, always put your ends if, don't forget that, that helps you write when you, and now we can write our code in here. So now we need to check a few other, we, there's two other things we want to check for to make sure before we actually make a change. Okay, so we've checked for two things already. We've checked, is there a change between E6 and all the way down, all the way down over here to the last would be J184. So if there's any change within that range, do something. Okay, so we've got that covered. But there's two other conditions. One, I want to make sure that the employee knew is false. B6 must be false. We're going to check for that. And the second condition we want to check for is that there is an actual number here. 22 columns over the current row, we want to make sure that's a number. So if those two conditions exist, then 
update that employee database. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go back into the code and write in those two checks. So if range, oh, one other thing we have to check for before is that employee number dot value. If the employee number, the row number is blank, we cannot, of course, save it. Employee ID, we got to have it. We got to have a row here to save it. So that's critical. We want to make sure there is. So we're going to put on a check for that as well. If the employee value equals empty, remember, if it's an error, it's going to be empty. So that's fine too. But or right. There's going to be multiple conditions, cells, target column, target row, the current target row, plus the target dot column plus 22. Now we know why it's 22. We went over that. Dot value, if that's empty, dot value equals empty or, right, is numeric. This checks if it's a number, is numeric. We want to also check that this value is numeric here. This value right here has to be numeric also. We want to make sure it's a number. That helps us avoid error. So if that is numeric, if it's equal to false, right, that means if it's not numeric, then do what? Then exit the sub. Okay, so we need to make sure that we need to get out of that. If any of those conditions, if B4 is empty, meaning there's no employee row, if there's no value in the mapping data, we need to make sure that, or if is numeric, it's empty. These probably two are, are duplicates. In other words, if it's empty, it's not going to be numeric, but that's just kind of a double check just to make sure. So we have that there, or if it's false, if it's numeric, if it's not numeric, then exit the sub. This helps us prevent bugs. So once we know all of that, we can continue with our actual code. And now we can get the employee row. Let's dimension the employee row first up here. We can do that right here as long, dim employee row as long, so that's important. And now we can set that employee row, employee row equals B4, right? Because that's our employee row. We know it's just range B4. And we can put a note, employee row. So we know what the row is in the database. We know what the column is because it's been mapped, so we're ready to go. Okay, let's write our code. It's very simple up to this point. Sheet 2, that is our employee database, range, no, sorry, cells. Okay, what is our row? Employee row is our row. What is our column? Well, our column is pretty simple. It's the target, it's the cells, target dot row. Actually, I could just copy and paste it. It is what we just copied right here. Cells, target row, target column, plus 22 value. So that value, right, that value, the, we've got the row, we've got the column, right, that value equals, what does it equal? The target value, that's the value we just changed. That is it, that's all we need to write. Let's go ahead and test this out. Looking back into the application, we'll look in the employee list. Both of these people don't have any addresses, so we can use them and add an address. And uh, here's one. And then one, two, three, four, Main Street. Okay, now I'll go back into there, and we see it's here. And if we give a city, let's go ahead and give them a city. Um, Any town. Great. Okay, and here it is. You see how easy that is to be updated? It's so super fast. We don't need to save the entire record every time. It's automatically updated using data mapping. It's super fast. It's super accurate. And even if we were to delete it. Done. Employee list. Let's go back in the city. It's now cleared out. You see how great data mapping is? It takes a little bit of time to get this mapping right. right? It takes a little bit of time and it's easy to make mistakes on the wrong column. So you want to test this out a lot. It's very easy to get to get the wrong. That's why when you bring your picture over, instead of going back and forth and back and forth, I try to take a screenshot so I can look at it real close. But once you get the mapping down, the coding is super simple and super fast. It saves memory. It saves time. And so it's really, really accurate. So I wanted to make sure you know how to save that. Let's continue on. Now that we've got the data mapping, now we can save it. 
we still need to program save new and cancel so let's go ahead and get those macros in right now into the developers tab individual basic we have our module here employee miscellaneous we've got employee load we've got employee new which we've gone over but now we want in save and cancel and I do have these already um, because we we're already nearly 30 minutes into this so let's go ahead and uh, just copy and paste what I have done here and then we can uh, go over each line of code it, it's a little bit quicker than typing I'm gonna paste those in here so I've pasted in just two macros save new which is here and cancel which cancels just one line of code so let's go and save new and I'll go over each one we're gonna do employee row and employee column is long and the idea is that when we have a new record we want to take all of that data and just save it over to our database so we have all this information here when we want to enter the information we don't need this anymore we understand what column it is when we enter this Fred uh, Fred or Fredders and first name Fred and we want to enter all this information you know what let's add one more additional thing I want this to be yellow when it's blank so let's add a conditional formatting in here we're going to go with the new rule and it's a very simple rule form format only cells that contain blanks if it's blank I want it formatted I know I'm moving kind of fast so if it's blank I just want to give it a color let's go ahead and give it this color yellow that, that's a required field we want to have at least one field that's required for each employee so when it's blank it's going to be yellow so when we add a name in automatically goes to white so now we've got information I want to get this information and I want to put it all the way down here into the first available row I want to automatically assign an employee ID and I want to put their information right here and then what I want to do is I don't want I want to sort it automatically based every time we add a new one I want to sort it automatically based on the last name so we got to get that in there too after the save so we'll go ahead and do that continuing back into the database and the code let's go ahead and take a look at that first of all sheet one we're going to be working with sheet one so that f6 is our last name this is a required so we're going to make this required that's the last name please enter a last name for the employee that is if it's empty we're going to bring up that message box and then we're going to select that just so they know and then we're going to exit out this guarantees that at least the last name is entered before we move forward with saving the new employee so that's really important next up I need to know what the employee row is and it's going to be the first available row of our database sheet which is here it's going to be our first available database in this case 224 so we can use this column A to locate it using XL and up dot row plus one and that's going to get us our first available row in the code so back into the code we go and employee row equals sheet two okay that's our employee list range a we use a because it's always going to have a value our employee ID is required it's always going to have a value and XL up dot row plus one that's going to get us our first available row so we have the employee row next up we are good to go we need to add in our employee ID so that's important so sheet 2 range a and the employee row value equals what is it equal we're gonna use the max function and we're gonna use that and we're gonna base it off the employee ID we've used this name range already remember the employee ID is already programmed in under the formulas name manager if we click on employee ID here tab over we're gonna see that all of those are the employee IDs what I want to do is I want to find the maximum of all of these and then I'm gonna add one they may not be in order so I'm gonna find the maximum value and then I'm gonna add one and we can do that either through if we were to do that in in Excel max right it would just look just like this we could do employee ID plus one so it's no different all we're doing is this exact thing but we're doing it in a VBA this tells us our next available employee ID it's unique so we're gonna do just this formula but we're doing it in VBA and we can do that through application worksheet function when we want to add a function into our VBA so that's what we're doing right here application worksheet function max 
the max of what? This employee ID range. This is the same range we just went over, plus one. Okay, so now we have, with this line of code, we've just entered our employee ID, in this case 1221, right here. Now we can use mapping to do the rest, because we know what cells, we won't always do that, we know what cells they're here, right here. So if we go with row one, we know where we're pulling the data from. We know already that the last name is going to come from F6. We know the first name is going to come from H6, and so on and so forth. So we can pull data just as we push data. We can also pull it. Pull it from sheet one, F6, and put it right here. So we can do that with just three lines of code. Two, one, four, next, and then the line. So let's go over that right now. Four, employee column equals 2 to 28. Why 2 to 28? Well, that's right here. If you remember when we mapped it, column 2 is B. Column 28 is the last column of data, which is right here, AB, which is our picture thumbnail. That's 28, so we're going to run through every column. We're going to determine what the range, where the original range is. We're going to pull the data from this range, if there's any, and we're going to place it right here. In fact, in this case, it's going to be the last row, of course, which is our last row, 224 here. So, so we're going to put it right here. So that is how that we're going to do that. We're going to place that right here. In this case, it's going to be row 224. So let's do that. So we can do that with the for next loop. For employee column equals 2 to 28. And then next employee column. So all we have is this one line of code that takes data from sheet one, our employee manager, and brings it into sheet two. So for example, sheet two sells employee row. We know the employee row. And we know the employee column value. What is that value? It equals sheet two sells. We got to get this range. What is this range? row one, row one employee column, this value, what is that value? Remember that value is is going to be in our data mapping. It's going to be right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, you know it's going to go continue. So we're using these data mapping ranges to pull data from our employee manager and bring it into our employee list into our new row 224. That's how it's going to work. So we've got that covered. So let's go ahead and continue and see what else is left on our save new. So we've covered that. It's going to do that all the way from 2 to 28. And next up, F2 equals F6 value. We need to update F2. What is F2? That is our employee name. I need to update this. We've saved it new, so I want this to appear, Fredder's comma Fred, right? Last name, comma, space, first name, just as we have done it here. So we need to update this with the name. So we can do that just with this line of code, F2 equals dot range, F6, that is our last name, comma, space, and H6. There we go. So that puts it in F2 because that's important. We want the name to show up there. And it's going to show up because it's now in our list. And then, of course, we want to just hide our new employee group. It's no longer a new employee, so we want to hide those buttons and we want to show the existing. So let's look at that. This is our new, our, our new employee group has save and cancel. So we want to hide those. Let's go ahead and assign that macro. Click on that, holding the control. Also clicking on the icon, then right clicking, assign macro, and then we'll just click the current workbook here because we have employee save new. That's the macro we're focused on. And that's going to work. Let's continue. We've got just two lines of code, a few lines of code. We want to set the employee B6. It's no longer a new employee, so we want to make sure to set B6 to false. Okay, now with employee list, now we've got to sort the name. Now I've got this, I've got the name, everything's saved. But what I want to do is when I select this drop down list, right? I don't want to see Fred's going to be all the way at the bottom, right? I don't want, I want this nicely sorted alphabetically so it's very easy for me to find. I want Fred to appear right here, right after, right after Frank's, I want Fred to appear right there. So when we save it, I want it sorted automatically. We can do that automatic sort with just a few lines of code. The first thing with sheet two is we're going to sort any sort fields we're going to clear those, so it's important before running any sort to clear any current sorts. So we can do that. Next up with the sheet two, we're going to sort fields. We're going to add a key. Before, before is our last name. 
We're going to sort on the values. We're going to sort ascending. That's A to Z. We want to sort A to Z. If you want the other one, D descending will work. And we're going to sort normal. We're going to set the range all the way from A4 to AB in the employee row. That's the last row. Remember, that's the last available row that we just added. And we're going to apply that sort. And that works just great. So when we go ahead and run that code, we've got Fred Fredders. When we click Save New, automatically everything's done. Now we've got our name in here. Now let's go ahead and click on this drop down list. And there we have Fredders Frank automatically sorted in our list in the right place. So it's been added, it's been sorted, everything's good. So now if we were to type in Fredders, the name will appear, but it'll also appear when we hit that comma, it's going to appear the full name and it'll load very quickly. So having it in the right space, or even if you type partial, you'd still get within the within the M using Alt drop down list. You're going to see we're right in the area, which is where we want to be, and it's perfectly sorted. Okay, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and focus on the cancel new. Basically, what I want to happen is if the user hits add new and then they cancel it, I want them to basically go back to an existing user. I want to get out of this add new mode. And we can do that simply by selecting the first one in the drop down list. And I'll show you how to do that. Back into the VBA, we have one more cancel new and we're going to say F2, that is our employee name, equals sheet 1 F185. Why 185? That is the first row in our link. If you remember, we just pasted that, so we can do that F185. We hid that, but if you remember, if you look down here, F185, that's the first one in our employee list. That's the first item. So we're just going to do that. Now we've already programmed that macro. All we need to do is assign it. Clicking on the button, holding the control, clicking on the icon as well, right click, assigning macro, and now we have employee cancel new. So we're going to go ahead with that one. Now when we click cancel, you're going to see the first record in our form comes up. So that's just gives us the ability to cancel and gets out of the save new mode. So now we've got add new, we've got cancel, so we're good to go on that. Because as soon as we select one, it the load macro runs. So all we need to do is simply put that in there, and it loads the macro. All right, moving on, there's a few updates I wanted to make as well to clear things up and uh, update things. Because in the time clock history, I want to take advantage of this extra space we have. Because what I want to do is I want to put in dates here and then I want to have this information fill in. In fact, we need to update this from and then to. So we have that, but I want to move this over just a little bit, one space over, and I want the ability to automatically fill in these dates based on the payroll. We're going to have multiple payrolls, right? So if you have a payroll that's got a start and end date or a from and to date, why not just enter the payroll? Right? So let's do that payroll. Let's just click payroll. We're going to eventually have a drop down list that has that payroll. And let's go ahead and update that. We have a cell style already, the field label here. And we have a field here so we can set our cell styles here. And then we have that. And we just have to update this uh, left border for the thicker one. Okay, so that's the idea. The idea is I want to click on this payroll. I want to click on a drop down list of this payroll and have those dates automatically fill in. I'm going to do the same thing with payroll history. So it's going to be a lot easier. Let's go ahead and paste that in there. All right. So that I wanted to clear that up. I wanted to make that a little bit clear. We, we have the space and it'll be great, right? We just have to click which payroll from a drop down list. The from and to can automatically fill in. We will be able to click on here, click a pop up calendar and have the dates customized. But this is a quick way for entering both time clock history, which is often based on a payroll period, as well, of course, the payroll. So that, that we have the ability to do that as well. Also, remember one thing we wanted to do, let me see if that picture shows up. Uh, it's, it's hiding. I want to make sure if that picture shows up in another tab, we want to make sure that's cleared. Payroll detail. When we click on this, I just want to make sure that the earnings details automatically selected. So let's update the code into the developers tab. Visual basic we go. We're going to go back into the employee tab, switch horizontal tabs here. And we can some, write some code at the end. And basically what I want to do is when we select this, I want to just make sure that this tab is selected. And we can select that. It's always going to be selected but if it's not if we've selected another tab 
and we go back in here, you'll see it's not going to be, we still show the first, but it's not automatically. So what I want to do is I want to set this B3 automatically to 66. That's all I want to do. So if we select another tab, go back, go back into the payroll, all I want to do is make this 66. Because when we do that, it's going to show that this is tab. So we just need to set B3 to 66, and that is if the payroll detail has been selected. And that would be when this B3, if B2, right, is 8, then make B3 66 automatically on tab change over. Let's do that. Now it's just one line of code. If selected column, right, we have that, do we've defined it up here, B2 here, so we have that, equals 8 then what then range b see what it is 3 equals 66 b3 dot value equals 66 and that'll, that'll set us that'll set the right conditional formatting automatically so we can see so that when we select on let's say pay additions we go out of there and we go back in automatically now it's set to 66 and now it's got that right look because we don't want to go in payroll and have nothing selected we want to make sure at least the first one it looks selected so good we've got that already gone we've got the payroll history we've got that we've got updated we are ready to move let's go ahead and put on some file attachments because I want to get this area I want to add file attachments here and the ability to add those let's conditional format those just as we have done the rest I'm going to save this area for a thumbnail picture. In fact, let me increase this column a little bit. All right, so we'll color this white and then give it a conditional formatting on the alternating rows, giving it the white color, going into conditional formatting. In fact, let's go new rule. I want to color it, no, we'll color it blue always. In other words, we don't whether there's data in there or not, we're going to color it, so that's fine. Click on the format. I want to use something lighter, which is more of a common color that we've used previously. We can go into the fill effects because we've used it previously, and here it is, recent colors. Now we just need to color both the first and the last color, that same recent color, and that's how we get a custom color into our fill, even though because there is no custom colors in this sign, so we can use fill effects to do that. All right, clicking OK and clicking there. All right, we're good to go. Another thing is I want to highlight the selected attachment. So we've got to set a, a row for that. Let's, go, let's put in selected attachment row here. And let's say it's 21, just for starters. Let's format this, our normal orange color, and give it borders so that we can differentiate between that and our other rows. All right, so what I want to do is I want to color this row, but I only want to color it if there's data here. So let's say if there's something here, I want to color this row. I want to highlight this whole row so we know which one's selected. So to do that, we're going to highlight the entire section and then back into conditional formatting and a new rule. There's going to be two conditions for this, two conditions. So we're going to use the and, use a formula equals and right two conditions the first condition is this e19 and it could be e19 it could be any row so we're going to get rid of the absolute dollar sign there we don't need that there any row does not equal blank so that's the first condition it cannot be blank the second condition is that this b7 must equal the row row and then open and close parentheses and then close parentheses there that is our formula both of those conditions when they're both true then we're going to format what is the format we'll use a blue but we'll use a dark blue a contrasting color giving it the font we'll give it a bold and white font so that it contrasts and then we're going to give it a fill a fill effects of a dark blue to just a little bit lighter blue something like this right here now we've got that contrasting color we've got our bold we've got our font bold and white so okay good now we can apply that to our range and we just have to make sure now it's 21 if we add a value in 21 there's two conditions it's going to show up 
right? If it's just one of those conditions, it's not going to show up. So that's working good. So we know that that is. And if we change this to 19, it's going to show up. All right, we've got that. Let's add our buttons onto that right now. I've got some additional buttons and some icons here. So we're going to go ahead and insert that into the pictures. I'm going to go into my I've got this attachment. Let's choose all icons because I've got some different formats. We're going to just going to use for add. We'll use this for the background, and then we're going to open it. So I'm going to use all of those icons right here and insert that. All right, good. Let's make this is going to be our main background. So we'll make that let's say point two, maybe two. All right, and uh, let's let's build out our buttons now. Insert. We're going to use just some small buttons. We're going to go with a square on this one because we don't have a lot of space. And I'll make it just as about as big as the column height. Let's zoom into that. Now we're going to go ahead and format those. We can use the same type of effect that we have used before in our consistent theme, which is this one here. And we'll move this to the top so we can see that. In fact, let's just move the button to the back. That's going to do what we need to do, send to the back. That way everything else is on top of that. We'll get an attachment we have. We want to add an attachment, so we want a button for that. Well, let's go ahead and add ATT. I don't want the full name because our button's going to be too big. So let's go ahead and write justify that. Once we set all the parameters, let's, I'm going to keep this, pin this down for a while. I'm going to be using it for a bit. Uh, write justify that and shrink the size a little bit. I want to, uh, this is a little bit too big. So bring that down to 0.2. And I also want to bring this down. This is going to be our add attachment buttons. When we have all the formats, we can then duplicate 0.12 on that. The add attachment that we're going to add, this will help us. Okay, that looks good. Bring it to the front, bring it forward. Okay, that's perfect for add attachments. And then we can then create what I want to do is I want to open the be able to open it and I also want to be able to delete an attachment too. So that button looks good. Actually, let me write, let's we've got a little bit too much space on the right, so let's adjust that. I'll scroll up so you can see here what we're doing here. Right click, format the shape, and we'll go into the text. And then we're going to go into the right. We don't need that much space, 0 0.03, so we can reduce the space. We also need space on the top and the bottom. We will center it on the top vertically, so we don't need that. All right, that's good. That reduces the size, and it helps us out so that we have space. We can now duplicate that. Let's go ahead and click on the paperclip. We're going to be duplicating that as well. That will use that for the delete. And then we want to open another one. Open, we'll use the folder again, control D, duplicating that. So we'll make this one open. We're going to add the folder icon to that one. And then we'll make this bring bring the width out a little bit. We'll make this one delete. That gives us the full ability to delete, open, and all that. All right, that looks good. We've got a delete icon up here. Bring that down, uh, move it up on the top. Bring it forward here, and we'll size that out to 0.13 as well. So we can see that's a clear delete. We can also group these now, holding the control down, selecting all the shapes, and then clicking group. And we also want always want to name our groups. That helps us. Delete ATT group. It's a group, so we can group. And we have add. And we have open. Now we've got a folder icon that's going to be helpful for the app. Bring it, bring that to the front. And then maybe we'll bring this paper clip a little bit. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing here. All right. I'll bring all in this case we'll bring the attachment paper clip a little bit smaller. And well the folder will be our main, and then we'll bring that, send that folder back backward a little bit. There we go. One too many. Okay, so that, that's okay. It's good enough. It gets you gets the point, even though it's not so clear. All right. So holding down the control and then grouping those, we're going to group those and we're going to call it Open ATT Group. Everything's consistent with our naming, so it's easy to remember when we're going into B. Holding the control plus plus, grouping them, 
and then add ATT group. Okay, we've got them all named, we've got them all, we're ready to go. And now let's shrink it down, select that, select it as a group and move it, there we go. Okay, and move it. And then the same thing here, we've got the selection tool so it's not as easy to move. And now we can group them, align them up horizontally, align, middle, and then we can use our up and down arrow keys to kind of move them. And then we can space them vertically accordingly. So distribute horizontally, I should say, and that spaces them out. Great. So now we've got our, we can unselect our select tool. Now it goes back to the normal cursor. Okay. So we have our add attachment, open attachment, and delete attachment. We're going to put an icon here. We can put a border here scroll up for that so you can see that format the cells we'll add a, a border onto here just a thin border blue our default color all right so that's looking really nice we've got a nice attachments we can bold this so it's consistent with our theme good good our our picture thumbnail will go here so we can add attachments we also want to add an attachment sheet so let's do that here in fact i have it already save us some time because we've got a lot to cover and uh, we're already nearing about, mm, I don't know, 45, 50 minutes or something. So attachments here. Let's go ahead and pull that up. I've got it here and this is a sample that we did to save us from time. Control C. I'm going to go back in ours and then I'm going to control paste, control V. All right. So we have our attachments. That makes it a lot easier. All that this is, is just a fade, just like we've done in the past. Normal table. Let's expand this column. And so here we have the employee ID we're going to put there, the employee name. I want to know who, who the employee is. The file name, we're going to keep that. The type, what a type of file is. The full path, added by. We're going to use added by. This is going to be the username. And in fact, I'm going to use the username that's of Excel, but you can use any different one. In fact, I'm going to use the username, which is right here. And I'll show you how to get that in the VBA code. You can use computer name and in fact, if we can if we continue down this application and your interest maintains we're going to add a user login id so we could add user login the login id add it on the date and time in the row and this is very very important because this is going to help tell us what row to change when we run our advanced filter we're going to run that advanced filter here and this is going to help us basically the idea is we're going to have lots of employees lots of attachments here but when we bring our attachments into here, we only want the attachments of this employee with this ID. That's the idea. So I want to load only those attachments. All of the attachments will be kept here, but only those attachments with the employee are going to be loaded here. So that's important. So let's continue down. And now we're ready to add some macros. The idea is I want to be able to click this button and add an attachment. And I want to copy that attachment. I want to be able to create a new folder for that attachment. And that folder, I want to default to the employee names. And also, one more thing we need, and we need a default folder. What do I mean by default folder? Where are we going to store all these attachments? Now, we could easily just keep the location wherever they are on the computer, but wouldn't it be nice if we had a specific folder, and then in that folder, all of our employees' folders, and in each of those folders, all the attachments. It's automatically organized. But what I need is I need a default folder. Let's just create a new screen and call it admin. We're going to build this out a lot in the future, but let's just make it very simple now. Default, we're not going to do anything with this right now because it's not that important right now. Default employee of attachments folder. Call it that. Attachments folder. All right, so we have that and we're just going to place it right here. Okay, so I'm going to go into my my folder structure here, and I've got this right here. In fact, I've got it already. I've created a folder in our employee manager. I've created this employee attachments folder. So I'm going to click on there, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that path. We're going to make it easy right now. Eventually, we'll build this out. You can browse it. So, But right now, I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to paste it right in here. So we have our name and our label. This is not going to look like this in the future, but for simple purposes, all I want to do is name this range so that we, whenever we decide to move it in the future, it's the named range is going to get moved with it. So let's let's go ahead and name that range. In fact, we're going to call it employee attached folder. So that's good. All right, so that means 
when we design this admin screen in the future, wherever we decide to move this, it's going to keep maintain that uh, name so that we can refer to this name in the VBA code, which is going to be easy. So for now, that's fine. Employee attachment folder. Let's go into the VBA code and create a module for those attachments. Back into there, and then what we can do is we don't need this. Let's not get confused. This is my, our sample, the one we've done. This is the one we're working on, okay? This is Employee Manager Part 3. The other one is called Sample, just so you know, in case that's the one we're, we're going on. And we copied some code from that, so it's going to help us create those. We're going to create a new module, Insert Module, and we'll call it Employee Attach into the properties, and then in the name Employee A. Attach, that's fine. Any name as long as it's not the same as a macro name. And I've get, again, once again, I've created some macros already to help us save some time in our sample. So all I really need to do is copy them over. I've got them already copied in another area. So let's go ahead and copy them and we'll go back into the new employee attach here. I'm going to paste those in right here. And let's just quickly go over that. I've got one macro for add. I've got another macro for refresh. What does refresh do? Refresh is going to take all of our attachments here. It's going to run them through an advanced filter based on one specific employee ID. It's going to return just uh, whatever employees, and then it's going to bring that information right over into here. So that's what refresh is going to do. We'll go over that step by step, so don't worry. I don't know how much we're going to get to in today's. And then we have the ability to delete it. All that's going to do is delete whatever one we have. And then we want to display the thumbnail. So those are the four macros that we're going to go over. So let's go ahead and go over to the first one, add. So here is, is add. This is the one we're going to assign to this button right here. Add and titular. Let's zoom in a little bit. Right click. We have a group. So let's click on that. Right click. Assign the macro and employee attach add. That's when we're going to assign that. And here's the idea of this. What I want to do is click add. I want to be able to add a specific picture. Finding a picture. Let's say we add this one. If it's a picture or a file, it doesn't matter. We can add it. And I want it to display. Now, of course, why did this all come up? Because you see, I already had. Uh, multiple for this employee I already had multiple you remember you saw them so now we have three they were all with the same employee that's why they all came up so the idea is for us to select a specific we haven't programmed in the, the macro that selects it but when I want to select it I want this employee to appear so we're gonna focus just on the ad and what that does is all it does is a click on it it's going to look find the last row it's going to add in the employee ID, the employee name, and all these details, then it's going to refresh it. It's going to do, it's going to add that and and then bring that data right back in here. It's going to put it right at the top because our newest is going to be at the top, our oldest is going to be at the bottom. Let's go through that macro and we'll see how much I'm going to get to. Maybe we'll get to the rest, the display uh, next week because we had so much to cover this week. We're going to create a file dialog on the last. That's going to create that open so that we can search for that. We're going to dimension we need some strings, the original file path of the picture, because we're going to copy that over. We also need to know the destination folder and the destination file path. Of course, the employee. The employee name is strings, so those are all strings. And the last attachment row, we need that as long, because we need to know it's actually going to be the first available attachment row, so that we can add that new one. First, we have the destination file folder. Sheet 4 is the admin. Remember, we just added that, and this is the named range. We named that name. This gives us the ability. This is not attached to any specific cell. We can move that anywhere we want to, as long as we have named range, which we did. We named it employee attached folder. This is that folder that we pasted in there, and that's just a, a rough way of doing it. We're going to eventually build that out to make it really nice, but for now, it's fine. We, we need to make sure that we have a destination folder, so this checks for that. If the destination file folder is empty, you could also use the words empty here, the user has not added a main folder, we're going to give them a message box before attaching any files for this employee, please select a dedicated folder. This means new line, it'll go to a new line so it's not all in the same line for this individual employee and then we're just going to exit the sub. So we need to make sure that if we are adding an attachment that there's a place that we can put it. So if there's no folder, we'd have to exit out of it. 
All right, we're good to go. We've, we've, now that we've secured, there is a folder. We can then set the employee ID. We know that's located in J2, so we want to set the employee ID. We're going to need that employee ID because we have to filter our attachments right here. We need to put that employee ID right here because when we run our advanced filter, we need to filter out only those attachments with this ID. That's why we need the employee ID. We also need the employee ID because we need to place that employee ID right here for our new attachment so that it has dual purposes. Employee name, we need to put that in there as well so we know that. Now why is this replaced? Our employee name is located in F2, right? But what I don't want to happen is I don't want to create a folder with a common name. I don't want to create a folder with spaces. I want, to, I want to get rid of those. So we can use the replace. What I want to do is I want to create a folder that looks something like this. In our folder structure, let's take a look at this folder. I want something like this. Last name, underscore, first name. That's what I want to, that's the kind of folder structure I want. Last name, underscore, first name. So to do that, all we need to do is replace this comma with an underscore, take that comma out, replace it with an underscore, and then remove any of the spaces. There's a space here we need to remove. So we can do that with the replace formula. So here is our original F2. This is our original employee name. We have two replacements. The first one is we're going to take, find the comma and replace it with underscore. The next one is we're going to find anything with a space and replace it with double quotes, meaning replace it with nothing. That is how we get a good folder name without any spaces or commas. We don't want those in our folder names. All right, so once we've done that, our employee name has been taken out, and our employee name is going to become our folder name. So that's why I have that. We're going to set the file folder, the application file dialog, is the file picker. This is going to launch that file picker. We're going to give it a title, select file to attach. Add files, add all files. That means there's no, we can add any type of file. There's no filters. In some instances in the past, we've added only pictures. For example, when we when we add an employee, look at this employee picture max filters. Right, this is for employee. But we only want pictures because this is an employee picture. So in this instance, for this dialog, when we're adding employee picture, we only want pictures. However, in the employee attachment, it could be any type of file. It could be an Excel file, it could be a PDF, it could be a Word document, it could be scanned in, it could be anything. So we don't necessarily need to limit it in this case. So all files and this star means any type of file. Again, if there's no, if the user has selected, go to no selection and this just skips it. So it's going to go all the way down here to no selection. In case they haven't selected anything and they cancel out of it, we need to make sure that that happens. We've got, now we're going to set the original file path. When they do select the item, the selected item equals the original file path. I also want to pull the file name. I want only the file name. And we can pull that out by using DIR, directory, and of the original file path. So now we have two. We've got the original file name, which is that long file name, and we have the file name. File name is the short name. Here is the file name right here. File name is this right here. This is the full path here and this is just the file name so it is extracts. So we got the file name. So we've got that covered. We've extra extracted that. Now we need to get the file type. We can use that by looking for the period, looking for the period and in the in string of the director of the file name of the file name, we're going to look for the period and we're going to take the right the file name and the length of the file minus basically all that this line does is extract the file type from it automatically so the file type could be jpg xlsm and jpg so that line just extracts and pulls so now we have the file type now we've got all of these information here already so we're ready to put it in our database okay so next up we need to check if the contact folder exists if let's put this employee name employee so it's clear what I want to use different variables different check if employee folder exists if not add it okay if the length directory the destination file folder that's the destination and backslash employee name if it equals zero means it doesn't exist if this equals zero that means our folder doesn't exist then we should create it then we can use the 
command make directory or mkdir, make directory will create a folder based on our destination file folder backslash and the employee name. Remember, employee name has already taken out the spaces in the comma, so it's already set up for that. So we're good to go with that. In fact, let me just make a change. I saw something I don't quite like. I don't want employee name here. I don't want it the same as the folder. I want the employee name. I, in other words, look, let's take a look at this so I can show you what I mean. Employee name, that's the, that should be for folder name. It should, it, should be, it should look like this, right? So let's change that. I don't like that. F2, we know is our employee name. So let's make that change here. It shouldn't be. It should be sheet1.range F2 value. Okay, so that's better because we don't really want to underscore. We only want that for the file name. So we've updated that. Let me save this now that I've done it once an hour. Make sure you do it once every five minutes. Don't do what I do and go an hour making changes and not save. Bad Randy. Okay, continuing on. Now we've got our file type. Now we've got our folder. Now we've got our destination file path. All we need to do is combine the folder and combine the employee name and the file name. All three of those, the folder, the employee name with the underscore, the file name, that creates our destination file. Now all we need to do is copy the whole thing, use file copy, copying it from the original location to the destination. All this does is it copies it from one to the area. So if you want to delete the original, you probably don't, but if you did, you could use this line of code, kill the original file path. I'll keep this uh, commented out. I don't necessarily think you want, but if you did, you could. You could use this if you wanted to delete the original location. All right, next up, all we need to do is add all of that data into the attachments field. So let's do that. The last attachments row, we're going to use column D. The last row plus one, that's going to give us our first available attachment row. We just went through that earlier in the employees. So basically, this line of code gets us the first available row. Now, in each individual column, all we need to do is add in the employee ID, add in the employee name, add in the file name, the file type, the destination file, and the application username. Application username, this is the username that in Excel, this is who's ever using it. We can change this. You could use environment to see the Windows name. You could put whoever logged in onto Windows. Or in the future, we can use username based on the user that's logged in once we add our login and security. Now is going to give us our date and time. Row is important. We need row so we know when we filter those. And then we're going to run a macro called attach refresh. This is going to refresh. This is this macro here, which refreshes that. We're going to go over that next time, attach refresh, and we're going to go over delete next time. But you have, I'll include the macro so you can play with them. They're working as well as attachments display. So again, we're going to sheet one, E19 select. We're going to select the first item to display. That means when we refresh it, when we add a code, we want to select that first one. So when we add a picture, click add. And we can add, uh, let's say we want to add uh, this icon here. We can add it automatically. That first one's going to be selected. What are these numbers here? These numbers are going to be hidden eventually. Okay, But I want you to see these numbers. These numbers signify the row in the database. So when we delete this, we know what database row. Six. If you look at six, right? Take a look at the attachments in row six. It tells us what row to delete. So that's going to come in handy. We're going to go over that next time because we've run over on this. But thank you very much for joining me. We're going to continue with this employee manager. Please like it. Please share it. And please let me know these multi-part. This is going to be an amazing application. But the only way this application gets done and gets completed for you is with your support and that means liking sharing it and commenting it i appreciate it all so thank you very much have a great day